Hey. So, my last video on CinemaSins was four years ago, and in it, I made a claim. I said that CinemaSins weren't going to improve their content, and that their videos would continue being long and wrong. I'm making this video to see if I was right. And also because people keep asking me to make these damn things, so Merry Christmas, I guess. Part one is going to be recapping what's happened since my last video on CinemaSins was released. Part two is all about what CinemaSins operation currently looks like. And part three will be me elucidating a major reason why CinemaSins is terrible that I neglected to mention in previous videos. Let's get this over with. A few things have happened since sustaining stupidity that I simply have to comment on. The first of which being that no, I am not the guy in the car at the beginning of that video. That was Jeremy Scott, the narrator of most CinemaSins videos. It's extremely funny to me how many ardent CS defenders did not realize this. All you guys do is listen to this dude talk and you didn't even recognize his voice? Secondly, CinemaSins have removed a lot of their videos I used as evidence for my arguments, including the same video that caused people to think that I was Jeremy, the one where he rants about the live-action Winnie the Pooh movie and admits that the channel was entirely about criticizing Hollywood. The videos on their Unlearning channel are now all gone too, so if you were looking for someone to be weirdly antagonistic about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, then you're out of luck. Even this tweet referring to their video on The Watchmen is gone, which is kind of weird. Feels like Jeremy or Chris just looked at the references I had in my video description and nuked everything that they could instead of, uh, I don't know, defending themselves with pointed responses, leaving the content I reference up and owning to their mistakes. Truly the funniest thing CinemaSins has ever done is prove that their channel dedicated to criticizing movies can't handle criticism. The one ding to rule them all. Makes me wish I linked to their channel in my video description so they delete that. Something else that got removed after my video went up were all of Jeremy's before and after movie reviews on his CinemaSins Jeremy channel, aka the vids where Jeremy and some other person talk in a car about a movie right before and after they see it. I use these reviews to prove without a doubt that everything wrong with videos contain at least some criticism, due to the fact that Jeremy would often repeat the same criticisms in both videos. And now they're gone for some reason. Weird. This is more meaningful than it seems, though. See, in 2015, Screen Junkies debuted a new series called The Review Crew that consisted of some folks driving out to see a movie and reviewing it afterward in a car. Jeremy had already made before and after movie reviews by that point, so he accused them of plagiarism. Fans from both sides started going after each other at this point, resulting in a few people pointing out to Jeremy that the idea of reviewing movies in a car, one, was too broad of a concept to copyright, and two, had already been done by another channel called The Creature Hub. Eventually, Jeremy backed off his feckless copyright claim and made nice with screen junkies. I'm bringing this up because, well, it's funny, but also because it proves that Jeremy was proud enough of his show to accuse others of stealing its premise. But then I use it as proof in my video that everything wrong with videos are dumb, and suddenly every single before and after review just disappears? Murderers don't hide this much evidence. Also, I'm aware that CinemaSins made a part two to their Everything Wrong with CinemaSins video in which they passive-aggressively respond to some of the claims in my video by misrepresenting them, which is either cute or embarrassing depending on what your opinion is of spineless things. There's really nothing to comment on here because of course the people who make a living off not paying attention to movies didn't pay attention to my video. Anyways, I largely don't respond to comments on my videos anymore, but let me just broadly address some of the criticism to sustaining stupidity. Dear CinemaSins fans, if you like everything wrong with videos and don't think about it any more than that, fine. I get it. Enjoy what you enjoy. But when you deploy that excuse while simultaneously freaking out on me when I dislike the thing that you like, it kinda makes you look like hypocrites. If you get to like something for no reason, I get to dislike it for no reason. Except I actually have a bunch of reasons to not like the thing that you like, but such is the hole that you have dug for yourselves. I've also been accused numerous times of being jealous of CinemaSins, which is a fun little trap of a non-criticism because if I deny it, then that just makes me look jealous. Also, even if I was jealous, does that somehow invalidate my criticisms? Regardless, I'll take the bait here and just say that no, I am not jealous of CinemaSins. See, making videos for me isn't entirely about making money or doing numbers. It's about saying something, getting my point across, expressing myself, and doing all of these things without compromising my core values. 
If I were to do what CinemaSins does for a living, mindlessly deconstruct films like a cinema slaughterhouse to remove the heart and profit off the muscle, I'm not kidding when I say that it would drive me insane. Even doing this video has reminded me of why I stopped making these things. I cannot do what CinemaSins does, and I don't want to. It's not worth my time, and honestly, it's not worth theirs either. So, I've been uh, keeping a secret from you guys for a few years now. The thing is, right after releasing my Sustaining Stupidity video, a writer from CinemaSins reached out to me to talk about things that they could do to improve their channel. Yes, I know, I just destroyed some of your minds by pointing out that CinemaSins has writers. Pause this video if you need a moment. Anyway, I won't say who it was because Chris and Jeremy might delete them like they do with everything else that makes them look bad. But what I will say is that I provided this person with nearly 800 words of advice, ranging from research everything you say to watch the movies you sin multiple times. Now, the ending of my Sustaining Stupidity video was all about how I didn't have faith that CinemaSins would change anything. After all, Chris and Jeremy are internet marketers, and those folks absolutely exude if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's heretical for a marketer to leave a profitable formula on the table. It simply isn't done. So when this writer reached out to me, suddenly I thought, was I wrong? Did I judge CinemaSins too harshly? This person is engaging me in what seems to be good faith, so I took some of the original ending that I had for my video, the stuff about how they could improve, and sent it along. Now, this was met with a barrage of replies defending CinemaSins from the fixes I proposed, and I stopped responding because this person was clearly not interested in what I had to say, but I had never thought that I would have this kind of access to their operation. This was a good sign, right? Maybe, maybe they could change after all. Let's grab a recent example of an Everything Wrong With video. Everything Wrong With Suicide Squad in 17 minutes or less. Yeah, they're still doing the in X minutes or less thing after cheekily experimenting with variations of it. Everything Wrong With Catwoman in meow minutes or less. No idea why they stopped making this comedy gold. So, you know how CinemaSins had a running gag complaining about X seconds of logos at the start of movies? This Suicide Squad video starts with 55 seconds of an ad for a wine loot crate. That's nearly a full minute chilling for a wine subscription service that, by all accounts, seems to suck ass. Reviews range from, the wine tastes like nothing, to, I can't unsubscribe from their incessant emails, to numerous, they won't let me cancel my membership and keep charging my credit card. Fun fact, if a subscription service forces you to enter your credit card info for a free trial, that means part of their business model relies on you accidentally forgetting you've subscribed and hoping you won't ask for a refund. Though these bright sellers folks seem to have taken that scam to the next level by straight up charging you incessantly without even delivering what you had originally ordered. This person got charged $345.26 for what was supposed to be $40 of wine. CinemaSins really knows how to pick them. With such a penchant for promoting scams, next thing you know, they'll be getting into NFTs. All right, let's continue with everything spoilers wrong duh with the Suicide Squad. As much as I want to act surprised that absolutely nothing about this presentation has changed aside from their new templatized intro, I'm just not gonna. Of course they're still using the exact same Premiere project file that they used years ago. These are the if it ain't broke folks after all. Though I feel the need to stress a criticism I levied nearly five years ago in my first everything wrong with everything wrong with video. What's the point of the movie Sin Timer? In their first few videos, I guess it was a joke to nail home the idea that these videos were trying to point stuff out as fast as possible. Kind of like the timer was a stopwatch. But CinemaSins clearly don't give a damn about that anymore. I mean, this video is 17 minutes long. At least the long part of my long and wrong prediction was accurate. Also, on the CinemaSins sister channel TV Sins, they don't have a timer on their videos. So why? Why? I'm so confused. Michael Rooker appears in a James Gunn film cliche. Still doing the cliche joke, I guess. FYI, both Michael Rooker and Nathan Fillion have been in all of James Gunn's movies. So I don't know why they didn't also make this joke when Nathan pops up later. Cool hero walk shot, but why is giant American flag? This may be an aircraft takeoff zone, but it's still a f***ing prison. 
For-profit prisons in the U.S. do not wastefully spend any money, let alone on something as stupid as an American flag as big as a football field. Okay, dude, this is a movie. The giant American flag is clearly symbolic. This guy, his name is Rick Flag, for Christ's sake. CinemaSin's observation is one step removed from criticizing Savant's blood forming into Warner Brothers Pictures Presents later on and being like, how convenient that this blood forms into these specific words. It's not insightful. It's not funny. It's just nothing. Also, for-profit prisons don't wastefully spend any money. Yeah, I'm sure the CEOs profiting off America's horrible incarceration rates really earned their paychecks. What does Savant do again? It's Brian Derlin. He's an expert in weapons and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah. Thank you. Now that I know Savant is basically good with guns, I'm sure I will have no problem understanding what he brings to the team that is different from the likes of Deadshot, Deathstroke, Peacemaker, Rick Flag, Blackguard, Harley Quinn, and basically 90% of every Suicide Squad we've ever seen. Yeah. A lot of these characters boil down to good with guns, and that's the joke. The same joke inherent in Peacemaker and Bloodsport's rivalry early on. Who the fuck is Bloodsport? Robert Dubois, a world-class marksman. In his hands, anything is a deadly weapon. His father was a mercenary who trained his son to kill from the moment he was born. Each member of the team is chosen for his or her own completely unique set of abilities. This is Christopher Smith, known as Peacemaker. In his hands, anything is a deadly weapon. His father was a soldier who trained his son how to kill from the moment he was born. Are you having a laugh? What? You just said each member of the team is chosen for their unique abilities. He does exactly what I do. But better. I always hit my target's dead center. I hit them more in the center. You can't hit something more in the center? I use smaller bullets. What? They go inside your bullet holes without even touching the side. They're trying to prove who's the best with guns. The joke with Rooker's character is that he's being made to seem like the main character of the movie, but he dies immediately. Gunn is playing with our expectations here by showing a parallel character to the original Suicide Squad film's main character, Will Deadshot Smith, yet another character that's good with guns, or more specifically has great aim, and using that fact to hammer home how replaceable these characters are. I mean, the whole damn point of the Suicide Squad is that they're regarded by Waller as not special. Fuck! Turn around now, goddammit! You dumb piece of shit! Motherfucker! Goddammit! Task Force X! And this is the last motherfucking warning! Which is later subverted by the emotional climax of this story. Your name is Letters? Times the letters, dickhead. Boomerang would be amazing at cinema sense. Considering Boomerang spends both Suicide Squad movies being an annoying prick, you ain't wrong. Did anyone check on where the weasel could swim? Regardless, how about somebody just gives him a hand anyway? You know, just in case he is, in fact, drowning. Savant waits until he is f***ing sinking before finally deciding to help the poor rat bastard. I've pointed this out in another video, but it's actually dangerous to rescue someone who's drowning and panicking if you don't have a flotation device and aren't trained to do so. Because in their panic, they can actually drown you too. This is called rescuer drowning. Also, I just want to point out that not checking if Weasel could swim is, one, a hint at the slaughter that's to come, and two, really funny. Harley survives all of this, mostly due to her plot armor. Forgetting that there's a giant plot point about Silvio Luna wanting Harley to be his wife because the Corto Maltesians consider her an anti-American symbol, so they'd absolutely have orders to capture her alive, Rick Flagg also survives this. But CinemaSins only care about Harley for some reason. Reminds me of how much they hate Black Widow from those Marvel movies. I'm sure there's some common denominator here, but I can't put my finger on it. Oh well. Honestly, I'm not prepared to allow my brain to process this. Harley, take this one for me, will you? What the f Yeah, cool joke, Cinema Sins, but it was funnier when the movie made it. I am fully aware of how toxic some office workplaces can be, but this movie seems to be going to extreme lengths to make sure these people are as unlikable as possible. Celebrating their winnings is gross, but I can kind of see it. But why is this guy flipping off the pictures of the deceased as well? The character Steve Agee is flipping off in this scene is Weasel, who, as mentioned earlier in the film, kills children. <laughs> Werewolf, okay? He's a weasel. He's harmless. I mean, he's not harmless. He's killed 27 children, but, you know, we got him to, I think, 
He's agreed to do this. So yeah, Weasel fucking sucks. It's okay to flip him off. Why, movie? Why do you want me to hate these people? What the movie is doing here is using Waller's crew to highlight both how expendable the people on this mission are, which ramps up the tension when we get attached to Team 2's crew, while also providing a baseline on how the crew feels about Suicide Squads so they can have a change of heart later. So they start the movie being entertained by Team 1's deaths and end up being attached to Team 2. Kind of like the audience. Do you fucking get it? And with this bird vengeance, I present to you the only thing that comes close to a fully realized story arc. <sighs> okay. I think you mean character arc and not story arc. But even then you'd be wrong because a character arc happens to a single character. The bird you're saying got bird vengeance is another different bird than the one Savant killed earlier. So this doesn't really qualify. Additionally, if this is a legit criticism, it's wrong. There are character arcs all over the Suicide Squad. Bloodsport alone has a bunch, like him getting over his fear of rats, learning to be a leader, learning to be selfless, learning how to be part of a team. King Shark exists almost entirely to have an arc about making friends. Polka Dot Man has an arc about overcoming his circumstances to become a hero. Ratcatcher 2 has one about validating her father. Harley Quinn has a powerful arc continuing from her previous DCEU films regarding her taste in men. When your taste in men is as bad as mine, they don't just go away quietly. They slash your tires and they kill your dogs and tell you that the music you like ain't real music at all and all the cruelty. tears you apart after a while. But even knowing all this, I still pause when commenting here because maybe it is a joke. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe they said story arc on purpose knowing it was wrong as a clue that this comment is bullshit? After all, they say they make incorrect statements on purpose sometimes. And herein lies the reason why CinemaSins presents their content as satire or parody or an act or whatever they want to call it to sow enough doubt about their dumbass operation that you don't criticize them. Because, again, the Criticism Channel cannot handle criticism. Your mission is to infiltrate Jotunheim. Of all the names and all the collected history of humanity, why did the writers pick Jotunheim? It's as if they thought, hmm, everyone loves those Thor movies. Maybe we could steal some goodwill via osmosis. Jotunheim is a reference to the similar stronghold built by Nazis that appeared in the very first Suicide Squad comic from May 1987. Gotta check my math on that, but I'm pretty sure that predates the first Thor movie. That is an overhead projector. Do you ever use it anymore? No, not really. So why don't you just throw it away? Ratcatcher 2 would be- God, all of these fools would rule at CinemaSense. Nanawe in particular. Book read. Wow. <laughs> Book's upside down. You see that? It's pretending to read a book. So smart me. Enjoy books so much. You are the only one fit to carry my traveling. Oh, fine. It's cool when the British guy says it, but when I said the exact same thing in college, it somehow meant I was being a creepy jerk. Time to remind y'all that CinemaSins has writers. Someone was paid to write this. And also this. The titty monkey, sometimes called the titty monkey by ignorant Americans with a fondness for breasts. If you didn't catch that, the joke here is the word titty. In my admittedly dated experience of slumber parties, I always found it was a good idea to expel one's polka dots before settling in for bed, especially in mixed company. Did Jeremy think it was a normal thing to jerk off at slumber parties? Is that the, is that where the joke is? Oh my God. What the fuck? Oh my God, I'm good at my job. <laughs> I found him. Seems more like the computer found him or the satellite. You were literally leaning back drinking a soda, so I don't know how you did anything. He ran the search to find Rick Flagg in the first place. This is like a teen telling their parents, I didn't search for porno. My computer did. Forget my appearance. Senorita Queen. Apologizing for something you have complete control over. Seriously, Luna clearly arranged for all these people to be here for Harley's arrival. And now he's acting as if his anaconda don't want none and wasn't thusly prepared. Here's Cinema Sins being so, so frustratingly close to realizing that Silvio Luna did this on purpose to entice Harley. We lived homeless in the streets of- Skip! Well, if there's one thing that's different about CinemaSins' current content versus their old stuff, it's that now they're outright bragging about not paying attention. This is more fucked up considering Ratcatcher 2's relationship with her father plays a critical role in the Suicide Squad's emotional denouement. But yeah, sure. Skip. Stay 
state considered the rats a weapon? I don't think I can fault the state here. You have already used the rats as a weapon in the last couple days, so why the tears? Ratcatcher 2's comment here is less about the technicalities of using animals as weapons, which, yes, legally speaking, using a dog while robbing a bank is considered armed robbery. But the thing you should be paying attention to is that Ratcatcher 2 doesn't view them as weapons. That idea is ridiculous to her because in her mind, they're partners, friends, and family. Also, she's crying because she just told a story about how her father died of a drug overdose, you fucking clown. Yes, these guys are assassin guys. Borderline superhero-ish with abilities, but they can still die in a horrible rollover crash. And yet they intentionally kill the driver, then when the passenger takes over driving, they take him out too. What the sh**? To be fair, it was Peacemaker alone who shot the driver and strangled the other guy, keeping in line with Peacemaker's penchant for fucking up. I mean, if you're gonna be strangled to death. Okay, I seriously didn't expect to come back to commenting on CinemaSins videos thinking I'd have to deal with not just horniness, but horniness on a level I've never seen before. Adding torture to this already torturous experience. Then put the emergency code! Now! Why would they have given the emergency front door lock code to the scientist working on experiments inside the building? This is a military-run facility. A facility housing a giant interstellar starfish capable of zombifying humans. It seems like a good idea that everyone working on the project has the code to make sure that it doesn't get out. Hope he has time for this shark jumping side to side while the fish mimic his shape bullsh**. I'm not sure we'd have time for this crap in a movie titled Shark Jump Side to Side While Fish Mimic His Shape. Yeah, movie. CinemaSins are only here to profit off feeling smart by nitpicking and misunderstanding you. They don't have time for this endearing character moment crap. I know we all love King Shark, but the amount of bullets being unloaded into him is enough to take down a tank let alone a super strong sea animal. No questions about the technology that lets Ratcatcher 2 telepathically control rats on a massive scale, but you draw the line at why come King Shark bulletproof? Symbol. This is a genuinely cool and fun scene. I, I really don't know what CinemaSins is looking for in a movie. I knew Sebastian sensed good in you for a reason. I'm sorry. This is nitpicky even for me, but... I'm just gonna spare you all from 33 seconds of pointless semantic whinging to stress that this sin is 33 full seconds of pointless semantic whinging. Honey! Take the high ground! What? She has a spear. You have guns and grenades and arrows and all kinds of sh**. Why is she taking the high ground? Starro has one obvious weak point, its giant eyeball. Harley can't hit it from ground level without throwing her spear. A good tactic would be for her to get up high and drop down onto Starro's eye. Oh look, that's exactly what she does. Weird. I bet nearly one third of this film's entire budget went to the CGI of the climax. How is this a bad thing? I'd say it's pretty common for the climax of a movie to have more spectacle than the rest. Goddamn CG artists getting paid for their hard work. Ah, you may be tempted to marvel at the underwater gracefulness of Harley and the rats. I'm here to remind you that this is not water. It's eyeball juice. Eyeball juice, AKA vitreous humor, is 98% water. For comparison, oceans are 96.5% water. So the last sin I'm going to talk about is a lot. During the finale of The Suicide Squad, Task Force X has defied Waller to save Corto Maltese from Starro, risking their lives to do so. During this confrontation, Polka Dot Man gets killed while Bloodsport and Ratcatcher 2 nearly die. Starro speaks through one of its puppeted humans and says, This city is mine! Leading Ratcatcher 2 to say, This city isn't yours. This city isn't ours. This city is theirs. Thousands upon thousands of rats appear and start climbing up Starro, and then this scene happens. Why rats, Papa? Rats are the lowliest and most despised of all creatures, my love. If they have purpose, so do we all. This is such an emotional gut punch and the major reason why I love this movie so much. And the fact that it comes out of nowhere in a DCEU gore fest makes it so much better. 
using the rats as a metaphor for not only the Suicide Squad, but for anyone who feels that their life is meaningless. The movie shows us that purpose is just waiting to be found by anyone and everyone. And what does CinemaSins have to say? Taking your preteen daughter up to deadly heights just to teach a lesson about purpose. Also, how the f*** did they even get up there? They're not Batman. So the whole reason that I started making fun of CinemaSins was to point out that the people who make and consume everything wrong with videos are trying desperately to look and feel smart. But in the end, they just prove how impressively hard one can miss the entire point of why we tell each other stories in the first place. Rejecting emotional resonance doesn't make you intelligent. It disconnects you from your feelings. It makes you numb. Look. I don't hate Jeremy Scott or Chris Atkinson or any of the CinemaSins writers. I don't hate CinemaSins fans either. Not even the guy who wanted to fight me in real life. It may sound like I do, but I really don't. I just passionately disagree with how CinemaSins has chosen to make money. They exist entirely to profit off of films, but there's an unintended consequence to their content that I've only recently been able to put into words. They promote intellectual intelligence as a substitute for emotional intelligence. They spread the idea that a movie can and should be judged not by whether it succeeds or fails at conveying an emotion, but whether or not someone used a superfluous prepositional phrase. It's enough to make me want to ask them to stop, but of course they won't. They can't. The moment CinemaSins pauses to reflect on what they're doing, their whole operation will crumble to the ground because critical thought and consideration is antithetical to their entire business model. For them, there's no time to feel. There's only time to mindlessly nitpick twice a week until the heat death of the fucking universe. If this video leaves you with anything, I want it to be this. Movies exist to emotionally connect with others. To make us feel something. To make us feel resentment, excitement, terror, apprehension, fear, hate, love. Feeling something, anything, is proof that you're alive. So ignore CinemaSins and the people like them and just, just fucking live.